we have made great progress in this year. Just to say one of the most important four-letter words in our economy is jobs. And as you can see, and I hope you can all see, uh, from 2020, this was the job situation, 2021, 6,400,000 jobs. <coughs> and the unemployment rate that has gone down to three, what, 3.4 uh, percent. Millions more Americans back to work, 3.9 percent in unemployment. And then now, of course, with legislation that is pending, we hope uh, that when we have more access to child care and universal pre-K and the rest, many more people will be able to go to work, uh, especially as the President addresses the, uh, continues to address the COVID uh, challenge that we have that are keeping people out of work but 6.4 million jobs versus this uh, practically over 5 million, nearly 6 million jobs lost the year before in the previous presidency. So with that, many more people uh, uh, availing themselves of the Affordable Care Act and 200 million more people, 5 million more people are very proud of that. When we gather in caucus, and as you know, sometimes it's hybrid these days, but any time we have gathered in caucus, one way or actually virtually or hybrid, I've said to them, under this roof, figuratively or actually, is the greatest collection of intellect, integrity, and imagination for... My Democrat colleagues tend to blame, you know, corporate greed is it corporate greed or, or what, what would you say if you had to identify in layman's terms what the, the biggest drivers for all of this inflation truly are? Some of it uh, is simply rebounding from COVID. Now, the U.S. is far worse than Europe or Japan. So something bad is happening here. And in my opinion, that is being driven by uh, poor policy choices. So spending, getting people not to work, regulation, particularly on labor and emissions, and union chokeholds on critical infrastructure. When we when we talk about policy choices, is it specifically federal overregulation that you think uh, of, of the food chain supply that that is uh, partially responsible for the inflation problem? Yes, I think regulations in general uh, are partially responsible. Uh, as Mr. Mann alluded earlier, uh, in any sort of scrutiny, rules, micromanaging, impositions, these tend to distort markets. They also tend to drive prices up and supply down. See, our, our view is differs, you know, the Republican response to this is different than the Democrats, not to make this a partisan issue, but the approach to the to the crisis is different. So, you know, our Democrat colleagues want, sorry about that, our Democratic colleagues want to, their, their reflexive response is to further grow the federal government, to give more power to the F, FTC and the DOJ and other agencies. And, and we look at that response and say, no, that is putting uh, fuel on a fire. That makes it worse. We need to get back to the free market. So, policy choices. If we were going to do the opposite, what do you think we should do in a minute? <laughs> uh, probably, uh, you know, the single biggest changes are bringing uh, competition to the port monopolies. Uh, that would likely have a very quick impact. And then uh, regulation really across the board against producers, standing down on some of this uh, scrutiny and um, sort of going after them and rather actually removing regulations. President Trump did do that early in the pandemic, right? Supply chains were creaking. There was a lot of concern. He sat down with various industries and said, how can we, the federal government, proactively get out of the way? That's what could be done. What a, what a concept, right? Get the federal government out of the way. Reagan said, government's not the solution. Government is the problem. We subscribe to that. I'm out of